Hi guys, in this video we're going to make an item generator. So let's get started after the fade. So if you don't have this project, uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, export all the assets that we have here. Uh, I, uh, oops, I don't want to do import. Uh, the version of Unity I have here is version 5.50F3. So I am going to uh, export this package and I'm going to include everything. Um, I, uh, I don't think I can include standard assets. You're going to have to include the standard assets. I'm, I'm not going to include them just in case there's, there's reasons why I can't include them. Uh, but I'm going to include the rest of this. This is all from Pixar, so it's you can download it from me or you can download it from the Pixar website. There's no, um, it's free. So I'm not entirely sure about the standard assets though. Uh, if you know, then leave a comment in the, the, the below and I'll, I can change, I can change that. Um, okay, so uh, that's all we want to do, export. And I want to export this to, uh, let's just call this exports. And I will call this um, just call it open treasure chest and I'll put a link below um, and over here before I forget I will uh, zip that up uh, send to compress folder okay there we go all right done all right so this is where we got last time um, so we walk up to here and we hold down the, the fire button and it opens the chest. Okay, so if you're not familiar with that, I'll put a link to the, the videos. Uh, I guess it'll be there, <laughs> up there, somewhere, now, ish. Uh, okay. So what I want to do is I, I went to thesaurus.com before I started this video and uh, we're going to uh, generate some uh, uh, a random named, I don't want to phrase this, it's a randomly named item, but it could be anything. Um, right now I've chosen pants because pants are funny, because I'm British and we seem to like this kind of sense of humour. So it's full of things like, um, so knickers and slacks and bloomers and all this kind of stuff. So this is this is what I have now is, is all of these sort of random words. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose some of those random words and then generate an item from that when you open up. The, the case. And it could be the fact that some of these are only split so that they're only available for, um, you know, level, maybe level one is only that amount and then level two is all of this amount and so on. So we can sort of try and see if we get time to, to uh, fudge the, the, the values that we, we generate here. But uh, this is what we, the sort of basic thing is we want to have like a random item generator. So so we'll end up with things like absurd, absurd knickers of general ambling, that kind of phrasing. Okay. All right. So I want to create a another script in here, and I want to call this a random item generator. So my random item generator is going to class random item generator uh, is going to sit on the object or does it need to sit in the object does it need to be that I guess it does ish I guess do I need to know the current state okay I can what what I think I'll do I'm going to do is I'm going to have a random item generator because I want to do this the right way. So I don't want the random item generator to know about the treasure chest because I also want to have a random item generator like let's say you you kill uh, a troll then a random item generator can be used in that situation to um, uh, to generate a random item when you, you know you, you or you more than one random item. So I think a random item generator is good but we need to have it separate from the treasure chest, which means we need to have something in between the treasure chest and the random item generator 
to fire that. So that's what we're going to do today is we're going to do the random item generator and the class that's going to fire when the treasure chest is there. So it's, we're going to have some other intermediate object that's waiting to fire the random item generator. So, okay. So there's a random item generator there, and we're going to make that a model behavior. Now, just for quickness, I I did I, I did these random numbers behind the scenes, um, like out of out of the scope of this video. Uh, you can f get your strings from anywhere. I I got them from uh, basically I made this these ones up. So that's why they're all kind of weird. And the rest of these are basically from thesaurus.com. So I'm going to paste them in here. And now I have my sort of three random things. Now my random thing is going to be public um, string uh, get random item. So I'm just going to have a string called get random item, and that's going to be pick adjective uh, pick item name pick ending qualifier. That sounds good enough. And then we're going to return that uh, at the end there, um, and we'll just we'll just do like a random one just now and then we'll refine that as we as we go on through this video so our uh, random number generator is um let me just think random dot range yeah, okay, so random range, and I think we can get that in integers, okay. And then if I remember rightly, I, I keep doing this every time we do random numbers, I think when you do the float, it's inclusive. Yeah, and when you do the integer, it's exclusive. Yeah, so the, ma the min is inclusive and the max is exclusive. So I can do um, int uh, adjective index equals random dot range and then it's gonna be zero to adjective dot oops, dot length int uh, item index equals random dot range zero comma item name dot length int uh, and this is gonna be ending equals random dot range zero comma right, uh, ending dot length why you know working oh that'll be why ending index Okay, so I know this is going to be, the word is going to be um, adjective, uh, sorry, um, item wording equals, and then it's going to be the index of some random word in here, plus the index of some random word in here, plus the index in here. And remember that, that this is, these are all uh, arrays. Uh, and arrays start from zero and go all the way through to, if you have n items, it's n minus one. So we start at zero and we go zero, one, two, three, four. So zero, one, two, three, four. So our fifth item is index four. Our first item is index zero. Um, so the wording is going to be, uh, first of all, is the adjective. Adjective, uh, adjective index. Uh, plus, so this is going to be absurd, oh no, that's going to be a space, plus uh, item name, item index, and then that's going to be of ending, 
pending index return item wording. Okay, so our random number generator just now, all it's going to do is just spit out these, these values here. And we're going to tweak these later on so we can get like a, a level 1, a level 2, and a level 3 uh, version of that. Um, so our adjective is going to be, uh, we get our adjective index, so that's the the element number inside this array of adjectives. And then we do the same thing for item, we do the same thing for ending, and then we generate our random uh, phrasing. And again, we don't have it as, we don't have it capitalized yet, but we'll, we'll get to that. Um, okay, I think that's okay. Um, and what we can do is we can just cheat just now. So if I go back to here, and I go to my treasure chest and I just add my random item generator. So now I have my random item generator in uh, attached to the same uh, object as my tre uh, treasure chest. What I can do is when my treasure chest opens, which is down here. So if you go to treasurechest.cs, uh, you'll see that we have a toggle chest which is the thing that opens it. So at a set amount of time, uh, the chest state becomes complete. Uh, so the, yeah, lid state is complete. So toggle chest, uh, where is that? Oh, that's open chest, okay. Do we want it to be that? Um, okay. Let's just hack it just now because we just want to we just want to test it. So if chest state equals lid state dot open um, item generator equals get component random item generator and then I just want to debug that. get random item. So when we open the treasure chest, we're going to generate a random item. So I'll get the console window up here. All right. Everything compiles. And we walk towards here. And then open up. And now we get the capricious genes of macho cheese. Sounds good. Uh, let's try that again. And we open it up. And we get the wacky knickers of wretched pockets. Okay. So it's working. We're getting the we're getting the randomness in there. Uh, okay, so um where are we? Uh, okay, we've got that there. Um, I want to capitalize these things now. We could, we could capitalize every word, or should we? I think we probably should actually. Um, yeah, we probably should. Well, okay, we could do um, capitalize all of that. Now, we don't have a function for capitalize just yet, but we will have in a second. So string capitalize. Um, and I'm going to do the cheesiest version of capitalize I can think of, because, uh, again, we're just trying to get this to work uh, as an exercise to you, you can you can you know do link or whatever for this. Um, but this method this should just work. String and then I'm gonna say split equals input dot split. 
Uh.2chari. So I'm going to remove all the spaces. So I'm going to split the word up by spaces. And I am going to do string uh, ignore. What's it called? System dot string split options dot remove empty entries. So just in case there's any empty entries in there, I, I want to get rid of them. Any white, any any further white space. And then I want to say. Um, String, um, can I do this in one string array? I don't think I can do this in one string array. Um, so I'm going to put new, new strings equals new string split dot length. So I'm going to create a new array. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the words over one at a time, but I'm going to capitalize the first word every time I add it to the array. So I'm going to say for int i equals zero, i less than split dot length, i plus plus. I'm going to go through all the items in the split array and I'm going to add them to new strings. Okay. Um, so my new strings ith item is going to be the ith item of split uh, and that's going to be the zeroth index but that is going to be um, Do that with a char. I mean, I really could cheat here, but I don't really want to cheat. Uh, and I could make it really messy. What I could do is, I don't think there is a char option. Is there dot two upper? Oh, there is. Two upper, and then that one there, plus split i dot substring one. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the first character in the string and I am converting it to uppercase and then I'm adding every other subsequent character to that uppercase value. And then I place all of that inside the new string arrays ith element. That make sense? Okay. And then what I want to do is I want to return string.join. So I want to join all those strings with spaces back to the caller. And the caller just happens to be this here. So this is going to be a word, a space, a word, a space, of space, and then an ending. So all of it's going to get capitalized, so we might as well capitalize it anyway. Um, not that it really ma matters, but uh, okay. So now we go down to our random generator. There we go up. And open it up, and we get our singular rompers of normal clothing. So, and it's capitalized as well. So that worked, and we can do fanciful bloomers of treasured monotony. All right, okay. So that works. A random number work. A random number generator works. Now we don't want this because this is tying, this is tying this class into a random item generator. And like I said, we don't want the classes to overlap. We want to we want to have them separate. So I'm going to add a glue class that brings those two together. And the way I'm going to do that is 
I am going to have a, a treasure item pick up. Okay, so I'm going to create a class called treasure chest item pickup. I'll be here. Uh, did I make that public? Did I make that public? I did make that public. Okay. Right, so this, this class here is going to be a link between the a text box that's going to say, hey, you picked up whatever item it was, and then delete it after a certain amount of times, time. And then it is going to have a link between the treasure chest, the random item generator, and the UI. Okay, we're getting there. So public text um, output, we'll just call this output. And again, we need to add uh, the UI there, and then we're going to have um, uh, we're going to have a random item generator, item generator, and then we're going to have a treasure chest. Uh, and these need to be, uh, no, they don't need to be public because I'm going to add them and start. So when we start up, I am going to add these items. So item generator equals get component random item generator. And treasure chest is going to be the same thing as well. And because we need these items, because this is the treasure chest pickup, I'm going to ask them to be required. So we need a treasure chest and we need a uh, random item generator. So if you add this, you're going to get these two coming along for the ride. That's the nice thing about doing it inside the inspector is this require component says, I need these components. And if you add this component, which is a mono behavior, you're going to get these two for the ride. It's kind of similar to the way that the uh, the event handler system works when you add a can canvas, it adds things automatically for you. It's kind of the same thing. I'm not entirely sure if that's under the hood what that, that does for the canvas, but this is exactly what happens is that if you add this, it'll add these if these don't exist inside that object. Okay, so now, uh, void update. Um, so in in my game, my treasure chest item pickup only works once. It only works once you've picked up the item, and at no other time does it work. Okay, so I'm gonna have a boolean picked up or item picked up equals false, and I'm gonna say uh, it's false to start with. So if item picked up um, actually you know what uh, I don't need an update I have a better plan I am going to make this an I enumerator add system collections and what I'm going to do is I am going to say while Item gen, uh, no, sorry, while well, treasure chest dot state is it? Current state is not equal to open yield return null. So I'm going to use my coroutines because this is only going to fire once then. Haha, -ha. this is a better way of doing it. So in my coroutine, I have a start, so the, ob the object starts, it then waits for the treasure chest to become open. And once it becomes open, we then generate the random item and then we display that random item on the screen. All right, and the beauty is that once that's happened, it never happens again because that's just the start. That's the end of the start phase for this object. 
So it never goes to an update. We don't need to ever tick this object beyond that and it just stops. It just, that's it, it's over. Uh, and it also means though that we don't, if I look at this object here inside the inspector, you notice that random item generator doesn't have a check mark against it and neither does treasure chest, but mesh render and box collider does. That's because they, those two have update methods and these two don't have update methods, and that's why we don't have that checkbox there. So if I do treasure item pickup, uh, you'll see that we don't have an output there because we don't have an output for the, the text. We'll sort that out in just a sec. Um, but you see it hasn't added any more because it's already got a random item generator and a treasure chest script. So get that there, get rid of these. Okay, and now, where are we? Item generator, your return. So now what we want to do is we want to uh, display that for a set amount of time. So let's say we're gonna do that for public float uh, display duration. And we'll put that out for three seconds. Uh, obviously you need to apply this to your character once you've displayed it, but yeah, it's good enough for what we've got just now. So I want to then do um, string item description. It's going to be item generator, uh, get random item. And then I'm going to say um, output dot text equals you picked up the, um, I think slash it backslash, oh, let's try this anyway, item description. Um, we can actually add in color and uh, we'll do that in just a sec. Um, there, and then we want to do yield, return you wait four seconds, and this is display duration, and then we want to say output.text equals that, and that's it. All right, so we get those components, we wait until the current state is not equal to, oh, it's gotta be, uh, yeah, that's right, while it's not equal to open. That's right, because initially it's going to be closed or closing or opening, and then eventually it's going to be open. Uh, and then once it's open, we generate the random num the generate the random item, display the random item, wait for the display duration, and then cancel the text. Okay. So now we need to have some text. So. Where is lockpick indicator is my canvas. So I'm going to add a component here. So uh, where's my component? There's my, that's that component there. So that's in there, put it to 2D. I'll zoom out a bit. And what we'll do is we'll put that text UI text, and we'll make this a little bit bigger. There, that's good enough size. Uh, that's about right. And we'll make it centered. And uh, font size 28. Is that big enough? I think that's big enough. Font size 28, and we'll make it white text. And we will make it bold and we'll also give it an outline as well uh, outline. and there you go it gives it a little kind of there you go something like that so we'll give it that there and then we'll go back to our treasure chest and now for the output what we can do is we can call this item 
pick up. Pick it. Item pick up. There you go, that's better. And go back to our treasure chest and then drag item pick up over to there. Okay, so now we're gonna get that displayed on the screen. So we don't we can get rid of that there and compile new text. Well that's not good. Why is new text there? New text shouldn't be there. It should just be blank. Silly rabbit. Okay. And now we go over here and we go whoop, and you picked up the ridiculous genes of nacho cheese and now it disappears. Okay. So let's try that again. Run over here and we open, 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 open. You picked up the implausible, whatever that was. Um, and then uh, it never ticks. That's the other thing as well, is if you go back to our treasure chest, you'll see that it never, um, sorry, it does tick. <laughs> it does tick, and I'll tell you why, uh, because I have that, whoops. There's one for the <coughs> blooper reel. Um, okay. Let's see, we've got random numbers here. Uh, okay, absurd breaches of middling use. All right. So, I mean, that's it. We're kind of pretty much done there. That's as it, uh, what are we in at? 30, 31 minutes, really? Okay, well, we could go a little bit further. Um, so like I said, the random item generator, um, we can bring these values in from a database, we could bring them in from a JSON file, uh, we could bring them in from any which way we want, uh, but the adjective values that we have here, uh, we could actually sort of mix and match those. So we could have the, the start value um, be different for each level that you want it to be at. So uh, let's say there was um, uh, public int uh, level one item int level two item level three item. So our uh, our items then go from, oh, how do we want to do this? We really want to do it for, let's say we just want the first three items there. So we don't want the rest of these. I mean, there's hundreds of these ones here. So we really want the, f the first three. Um, or do we want a range of items? And that should be three as well. Um, I don't want to do this. Well, I, I kind of want to partition it up into certain chunks. So if I'm a level one, I never get, like if I'm level uh, one, I, I only get absurd, crazy, exotic, fanciful. Um, and I never get to see grotesque, imaginative and the rest of them. And similarly, if I'm level two, I don't want to see any of these, but I do want to see, you know, these ones here. Um, okay. I think, I think I'm going to leave that for another video, actually. Um, I'm not going to do that just now. I think that's that's more than enough. Half an hour is more than enough, I think, for uh, for the what we have just now. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I, I know everybody's time is important. Um, 
it just everybody's time gets compressed into just a very very small chunk of, of time um and so i do appreciate your your viewership um uh, and until next time uh thank you very much um if you liked the video, uh, just give it a thumbs up, and if you didn't like the video, thumbs down. And please let me know uh, what went wrong. What, what what did I do wrong? Tell me, tell me, uh, and I'll I'll try and be good uh, next time. So thank you very much again. Bye.